Yo, what's going on guys? Top of the evening. Another flat ass day today, wasn't it? Holy smolies. Flatsville. Yes, those are the two same stocks, AMC, GME. Um, what do we got to talk about? Oh, the whole Citadel fiasco. We got an MSN clip that was pretty goddamn cool. And then a little bit of Pelosi news, the Fed uh, in, uh, inflation report out tomorrow. Buckle your seatbelts, get your five-point restraints on, folks, everything. Uh, excuse the clogged-up nose, by the way. The vid, I still have the vid uh, lingering around here. I got so bored, I drove around the block for about 45 minutes today. Like a goofball. Um, anyway, so that Citadel thing. The news has been out everywhere. I've heard everything. Oh, Citadel's going broke. And, you know, $1.15 is not a lot of money for them. Would I like to think they're in that much trouble? Sure. Uh, seen some other comments, posts, people thinking, oh, they're going to use all this money to short GameStop and AMC into the ground. No, they're not. Stop. Stop, stop, stop. Right? Um, so, yeah, I thought about it. Then I ran across uh, somewhere today. We're going to touch on it briefly. More importantly, I want to share this with you guys. Get your opinions on what you think's going on with this 1.15. First time since Ken Griffin's owned this hedge fund for years and years and years, decades, right, that he's taken this money. Uh, <clears throat> IPO, crypto, whatever. We don't know yet. Until I got to this article, I started thinking, I'm like, dude, there, again, back to we're the little tiny fish at the bottom of the ocean, you know, looking for these stupid little pebbles, the goddamn thing I drew up the other day. There's a reasoning behind this, folks. No, they're not going to grab 1.15, you know, billion and short AMC into the ground or GameStop into the ground. It's not happened. There's a reason behind it, right? Are they in trouble? They're way over leveraged. We know we know all of this. But again, there, there's a reason to it. And I think this article will kind of uh, wake you up to it. So anyway, long story short, not much going on with the stocks. We know where they're at, right? 130, 129, whatever you want to call it, 2279, 2272 in after hours. There's the article right from the old Citadel website itself. Citadel Securities announced a $1.15 billion investment from Secua, however you pronounce that, and Paradigm, Par yeah, whatever, you know what I'm saying. Um, so anyway, the news articles everywhere. We ran it. We've seen this one. We've seen this one, blah, blah, blah. Then this, okay? This dude is part of these dudes here. OK, now I don't want to give any of this away. I want you to be the judge for yourself. I'm going to pop this in here. Just a little background on this fine gentleman. OK, it's a big, long article right here. If you guys have not seen this, definitely take a peek. Let me know what in the God's green earth you think is going on here. Um, you know, again, we would like to see Citadel go bust. Do they need this one billion to bail them out? Sure. We would love all that. I doubt it. I don't think they're going to use this uh one billion in short AMC to five dollars tomorrow. Not happening. Okay, so that's just my opinion. Read this, you guys. Pretty crazy stuff, and kind of go, oh, oh, okay, yo, I see what's going on, right? McCarthy, <laughs> here's another one. We touched on this. We've been touching on this the last four or five nights, or whatever the hell you want to call it. McCarthy considering an outright ban on lawmakers being able to trade stocks in the GOP wins House. Okay, hold on, bear with me, guys. House Minority Leader Kevin McCartney, McCarthy, RCA, Republican California, is reportedly considering institutions' restrictions, including a potential outright ban on lawmakers being able to hold or trade a stock. One second. Drum roll. Pelosi likely to retire after this term, House Democrats say. Insider information and on stock, insider information. All of a sudden, she's going to poof, vanish before. Come on. Sure, is she getting older? Could it be a coincidence? Sure. I'd like to not think so. You know, if these guys are going to have insight on stocks, they're most certainly going to have insight on something like this. Am I saying she's getting out because she can't trade stocks anymore? No. But, you know, hey, do we want all the eyeballs on the old melted candle? I doubt it. Right? Jesus, you guys, again, goes back to this and this dude. Oh, man, you guys. <laughs> and then the old White House braces for brutal inflation report. This has been blasted out. Tomorrow, the numbers, the CPI numbers will be available. Um, yeah, buckle up. Seat belts, 
helmets, face shields, body armor. Get it all ready, boys and girls. Um, yeah, the, the, it's not been a good, what do we call it, a week and a half in 2022 already with the market. Um, the inflation thing, and they kind of braced us, what, a few, four or five days ago about it being, you know, eh, yeah. Hold on, folks. Hold on. Uh, White Wit Net One over on Super Stonk. Shout out, sir, for finding this. Sir or ma'am, I should say, for finding this little clip. This is pretty cool. I'm going to play this right here. It's only a couple minutes long. Um, the state of the short squeeze. That have held short positions since those events. Leslie. Hey, David. Yeah, long versus shorts, calls versus puts, bulls versus bears. Two sides of a trade make a market, but in GameStop, it was more than that. It was like an online battle straight out of a, well, a video game. The saga started months before GameStop started truly rallying. Melvin Capital, then a $12.5 billion hedge fund, disclosed a short position in GameStop through put options, which quickly got shared on Reddit's Wall Street Bets forum. Trouble was, Melvin wasn't alone. More than 100% of GameStop's tradable shares were held short a year ago. So as the stock surged over the course of January, thanks in part to retail investors swapping stock tips on social media, the general consensus online was to be long GameStop and force Melvin and other hedge funds to cover at a loss. That triggered a spike in GameStop shares toward the end of the month, which were propelled even higher. Melvin posted 2021 returns of negative 39%, according to a source, thanks in part to that squeeze. While it can be fun to paint the narrative as the small guys beating out the big guys, that wasn't necessarily the case if you kind of peel back the onion a bit. Senvest had actually been long GameStop and notched the year's best returns for any hedge fund with 85% gains. Still, the events of last January were a cautionary tale about short seller disclosure. Hedge funds became extra protective about where they went short and how they revealed it. Short positions don't have to be disclosed in SEC filings, but options such as puts do. And short interest in general remains pretty tepid as many investors who believe there's a fundamental basis perhaps to, be, to bet against a stock chose not to over fear that it will become the next short squeeze, guys. Yeah, interesting. Of course, Melvin, I hear, by the way, Leslie, had a, has had a brutal opening to the year as well this year, though not due to any sort of a short squeeze. But, uh, you know, I got some numbers yesterday that indicated it perhaps is down as much as 10 percent in the early going. Um, longer term, are we done, though, with this Reddit trade? It, it doesn't seem to be as active right now, certainly. Uh, could it come back or do we think it's going to be dormant for a while? As we kind of reflect on the last year, I, I started wondering whether anything's actually changed structurally that would prevent something like this from happening again. And David, I, I really struggle to find a, a reason why it wouldn't happen again, whether it be GameStop or another company, because there's been no change in regulation. There haven't really been much in the way of changes in terms of structural uh, aspects to this market. Robinhood's still functioning the same way, essentially, that it did back in January. There are no new SECs, SEC rules that would prevent something like this from happening. I guess the big change would be just the level of short interest out there, but there are certainly stocks that do have a high level of short interest that people say could be prone to squeezes. So, no, I don't see anything that prevents it from happening. Is it rare? Yes, but nothing necessarily would be in the way. Leslie, I mean, this is something that became it became a Main Street phenomenon, right? How many retail traders, how many new day traders to the market, uh, you know, sort of were lured in by, by everything that we saw take place last year and, of course, all the media coverage of it. Do we know a year later how many of those people are still active in the market? We don't have specific statistics on GameStop in particular, how many individual traders that were bullish on that are still holders of GameStop. However, if you speak with retail investor experts, they'll say that oftentimes they do hold on for uh, a lot longer than you'd expect. However, if it's momentum stock like stop like stock like GameStop, sorry, <laughs> haven't said those words in a few in, in a while, but um, you do tend to see people riding up to the highs and then selling out um, oftentimes before it gets uh, back up to those levels. Leslie, thanks. Uh, Leslie, uh, joining us uh, with a bit on that. In the meantime, you're looking at some live images here of the Fed chair. Thanks, Leslie. 
Wow, did he already say game, uh, Melvin, old Plotkin over there, is down 10% on the year? Isn't the 11th only? Good night. Get your ducats out of there, folks, if you got any over. Okay, well, you guys, the good news is we can't be uh, much lower than this, right? Than this activity here. Uh, yeah, I'm going to pop this son of a gun in. Let me know what you think of this madness. It's pretty interesting if you kind of think about it and go, oh, shit. What the hell? Okay, guys, let's see what tomorrow brings. It's hump day tomorrow. Happy pre-hump day or good morning on hump day if you're watching this in the morning time. I'll talk to you later.